Recently, a friend who is a local musician got in touch and asked me if I would be interested in building her a desk for her home, somewhere where she could sit and work on music production and mixing. She sent me a few pictures of what she had in mind and we talked about it quite a bit and I asked her a few questions to figure out what exactly she was looking for. The desk that she wanted would have a rustic appearance using reclaimed wood with lots of character. It would have two independent monitor stands for her speakers and they would be freestanding on the desktop so that they were movable so that the speakers can be repositioned to wherever they sound the best within the room. And it would be mounted on metal legs and she had in mind some trestle legs by Ikea called Lerberg. So I did some 3D drawings for her on SketchUp and this is the design that she settled on. The main materials that I will use on this project are these reclaimed floorboards. I got these from a neighbour who was renovating his house and I saved them from being thrown away. And these have been in my workshop for about two years now, just waiting to be used in a project just like this one. These floorboards are only 15mm thick, so they're not thick enough to create a solid tabletop on their own. So I went to my local timber merchants and bought two sheets of this 18mm thick spruce plywood. They had two full sheets which had been pulled out because they were damaged and quite dirty. So naturally I went straight for those ones and I actually got both sheets for half price so I paid £33 for both full sheets of plywood and they even made a cut for me so that I could fit it into my car. The desktop needs to be 1500mm wide by 750mm deep and the guys at the timber yard already cut this sheet to 1500mm which means I'll only need to make one cut to get this piece of plywood to the right size. I clamped a straight edge to the piece of ply and made the cut with my circular saw. I brushed off the dirt which was just on the surface of the wood so that was nice and easy to clean up. Next I'm going to lay the floorboards onto the piece of ply so that I can get an idea of how many rows of floorboards there will need to be in order to span the full depth of the desktop and also where I might need to make cuts. And I'm marking up with a pencil roughly where I want to make the cuts so that I can avoid the worst imperfections and knots within the wood. Some of these floorboards are slightly too long to cut at my mitre station so I'm going to use a circular saw to make the cut and a speed square to keep the cut square. I cut the shorter boards to length at the mitre station. I made a few light repairs to some of the floorboards, just gluing any torn out pieces back in place. Later on once these boards are sanded these repairs will barely be noticeable. After a few hours I removed the clamps and tape. Now that I've got the floorboards arranged where I want them I'm going to label them up so that I don't forget the order. As you can see some of the pieces are not the same width so I need to clean up both edges of each piece on the table saw and that will also ensure that all of the pieces fit together nicely without any big gaps. The next job is to clean up the underside of each of these boards. Some of them have a varnish finish so that will need to come off in order for the glue to stick properly and other pieces have paint on them. This one is going to be by far the hardest one to clean up. I'm going to use the belt sander for this with a 40 grit belt because that one should cut through to the bare wood quickly, I hope. That was a pretty nasty job and as you can see I'm covered in sawdust and paint and varnish dust now. 
And I got through three of these 40 grit sanding belts because as you can see they get pretty gummed up with varnish and paint so they don't last too long. And I didn't manage to get down to bare wood completely, you can see that there are some low spots here. But the main thing that I needed was a decent gluing surface and there's enough bare wood here to achieve that. These are the boards that were varnished and these are the boards that were painted and I had planned on facing the varnish and painted sides down onto the plywood so that it would look something like this but now that these sanded boards have been sanded down to remove most of the paint I actually really like the way that that looks so I've sent a quick message to the client and if she likes this then I'm going to go with it. I sent through a few photos of both sides of the wood and the client preferred the look of the unpainted sides so that's what I did in the end. Here I'm spreading the wood glue to start fitting the floorboards to the ply. I checked that these brad nails wouldn't shoot through the wood and out to the other side before firing them in. As these floorboards had quite a few old nail holes in them already, I fired most of the brads in close to the existing holes so that they would be less noticeable. Then I wiped off any excess glue squeeze out with a damp cloth. You can see here that I added glue to the edges of the boards too and I'm pushing them together before firing the brad nails in to try to keep the joints tight. And eventually the whole thing was covered. I added some sawdust to the glue to help fill any small gaps and wiped off the excess again with a damp cloth. Next I could work on getting all of the boards flush using my hand plane. Most of them were pretty flush already as all of the boards were the same thickness but there were some high spots. I had to be really careful here because there were a few old nails in the wood in addition to the brad nails that I'd just fired in and I didn't want to damage my plane iron so before planing I knocked the nails below the surface of the wood using a nail punch but I forgot to film that part. I first worked across the grain to get rid of the high spots and then with the grain to smooth it off. When I attached all of the boards to the plywood I left an overhang on all sides so to bring them all flush with the edges of the plywood I used a flush trim bit with the bearing referencing against the edge of the plywood in my trim router. The end grain was much more dense so I had to take that pretty slow. I have one remaining floorboard and I'm going to rip this into strips of 35mm to make the trim for the top. I first cleaned up one edge, then referenced that clean edge against the table saw's fence set to 35mm and cut three strips. I cut one end at 45 degrees on the motor saw. and lined that up and marked up the other end using a speed square. I could then line up the blade with the mark and make the cut. Then I glued and temporarily taped it to one of the long sides before firing in brad nails. I tried to keep it as flush with the top surface as possible to avoid lots of sanding later on. Then I trimmed the opposite side in exactly the same way. For the shorter sides I cut one end at 45 degrees again, then measured up the total distance between the outside edges of the trim that I'd just added, and marked this up onto the trim and made the second cut. I deliberately made my cuts a little bit heavy just to be safe and when I offered it up it was slightly too long. You can see the gap there on the right hand side so then I could shave off a very slight amount until it fitted nicely. So this is the following day and you can see here that I had added a few clamps just to help close the glue joints on the trim. Then it was time for yet more sanding with the belt sander. This time I used an 80 grit belt sanding in the direction of the grain. Then I used my random orbit sander at 120 grit to help clean up the belt sander marks. <laughs> 
I started sanding the edges of the desktop when my belt sander decided to die on me. Not sure what's happening with it. There's something rattling around inside and it seems to be coming from the drive wheel. I've removed all of the screws but I can't seem to get into the damn thing so I'm going to have to find another way to clean up the edges. I'm using an old Stanley knife blade to try and remove some of the old paint. And it's not really working. I'm just knocking the nails as far in as I can. I could use the orbital sander to sand this paint off, but it's just not aggressive enough, so I think it will take too long. So I switched to my hand plane, which I was reluctant to use here because of the paint and nails, but I really didn't have any other options at this point. I figured I'd just need to spend a bit of time at the end of the project resharpening my plane iron and dealing with any damage to it. Next I used a block plane just to ease over the sharp edges. So here I just did four strokes with the block plane at varying angles to create a very subtle round over. Really I was just aiming for the edges to be smooth enough for them to be comfortable on arms and elbows. I bought some of this walnut stain by Liberon, as the client wanted the desktop to roughly match her floorboards which had also been stained with a walnut stain. When I applied it, I was surprised at how dark the stain was compared with the label on the bottle, but it looked pretty good. I used an old cloth to rub on the stain and a second cloth to clean off any excess. That walnut stain has raised the grain slightly in the wood, so I'm just going to lightly sand this over with some 240 grit wet and dry paper. For finish I used this spray varnish by Motip as this will seal the wood nicely and be nice and hard wearing. Ideally this should be sprayed at a distance of around 25cm but because I was working outdoors as I didn't want my shop filled with varnish fumes there was a bit of wind to deal with so I had to apply it a little bit closer and you can see here from the stripes that I didn't get a particularly even coverage on the first coat. Once the first coat was dry, I sprayed on a little water and wet sanded at 400 grit to help keep the surface nice and smooth and give the next coat of varnish a key. I used a damp cloth to remove the dust after sanding. And then I could apply a second coat. And when that was dry, I repeated the process one more time, so it got three coats in total. And that was the top basically finished, so I stamped the underside with my maker's mark. 